organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, election aftermath. We'll break down everything you need to know about last night's results. Thousands of people voted early, but precincts in Johnson County were still crowded on election day. We'll tell you how many people showed up to cast their ballots. And in sports, we're heading to one of the most historic sports locations in all of Iowa City. Find out where coming up. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to your Wednesday edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm Ian Martin. And I'm Whitney Blakemore. Americans cast their votes and made many choices Tuesday night, but definitely the most recognized issue was who should be president. Obama ended the race by gaining 303 electoral votes over Governor Mitt Romney's 206. Our own state played a crucial role in the election by favoring President Obama. Thousands of last-minute voters made their way to the polls despite weeks of early voting. Daily Iowa TV reporter Alyssa Bergamini has more on the voter turnout in Johnson County before and after Election Day. It was a rainy start for voters in Johnson County on Election Day, but that did not stop voters from packing the polls. After months of debating, campaigning, and fundraising for this year's election, it was America's turn to voice their choice. But this year, all eyes were focused on the battleground state of Iowa, and the early voting numbers proved just that. Monday night was the final night early voters could cast their ballots. And the results? Over 46,000 voted early. This is a large increase compared to the early voters in 2008 and 2004. Early voting in the state for this year was more than 673,000, a jump from 2008's numbers, which was just over 481,000. Johnson County had the highest number of early voting in the state, making it more convenient for voters to vote on Election Day. Um, I chose to vote today because it's my first presidential election and I wanted to have the experience of the first day on the actual Election Day. CNN reporter John King tells us who impacts Iowa during the race. The Democrats always make a bigger push, especially in this state. They always make a bigger push than the Republicans, but they're making an even bigger push with a focus on the younger voters. And King was right. The younger population felt part of this year's election. But some young voters might have been sleeping in because earlier Tuesday, some precincts had a shockingly low turnout. It started very slow. I think we had seven voters the first hour, and then it's picked up since then. The polls closed at 9 and the final ballots were in. The grand total of voters in Johnson County came just under 75,000. 31 percent or around 23,000 voted for Republican Mitt Romney. And on the other hand, 67 percent or just over 50,000 voted to re-elect President Barack Obama. Compare this to 2008 when the total number of voters was just over 73,000. Obama led with 70% of the votes and McCain with only 28%. The race is over and along with America, Iowa chose Obama, the state that propelled him in 2008. Alyssa Bergamini, Daily Iowan TV. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV. Johnson County said yes to the proposed Justice Center in Iowa City. And in sports, the University of Iowa field hockey team spent their Tuesday night awaiting word on a possible bid to the NCAA tournament. Did the Hawks get the nod? Find out soon. But first, let's check in with Tara Bimschlager for a look at our local weather. Thanks, Ian. We've had some pretty good weather here lately. To start the day tomorrow, it's looking like 43 degrees and sunny in the morning, with temperatures warming up to a sunny 54 in the afternoon. Tomorrow evening will be 45 degrees and clear to end the day. 
For the rest of the week, Friday is looking pretty similar, and Saturday a heat wave strikes us just in time for the Purdue game. Saturday's temperatures will be 73 degrees with just a few clouds in the sky. Sunday has an 80% chance of thunderstorms to round up the weekend. Monday and Tuesday bring a chilly start to the week with a high of 37 and 41. And that's it for me here at Weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Iowa voters also had to cast votes about decisions a little closer to home. In eastern Iowa, Congressman Dave Lozak won U.S. House District 2 with 55% of the vote against Republican challenger John Archer. Iowa voters also decided to retain Justice David Wiggins. Wiggins is an Iowa Supreme Court justice who was part of the unanimous decision to legalize same-sex marriage in the state back in 2009. Since that decision, the issue has brought in thousands of dollars from out-of-state conservatives campaigning to kick Wiggins out of his position. And finally, Lynn County residents will now be paying more for their landlines. Iowa's, Iowans voted a 57% yes to raising costs in order to provide better 911 services. And the possibility of breaking ground on the Johnson County Justice Center was a hot button issue leading up to last night's election. The people, though, voted against a new Justice Center. Daily Iowan TV's Anna Theodosis takes a deeper look into the issue. Residents of Johnson County sounded off on Election Day on whether or not they wanted to see a new Justice Center be built. I'm standing behind the Johnson County Courthouse. The public has voted and they have said no to a new Justice Center. If they had said yes, it would have been built behind me where there is currently a parking lot. The results came in around 1030 last night. 35,403 people voted yes for the proposed Johnson County Justice Center. That means 56% of voters said they wanted to see the center be built. But in order for the bond issue to be approved of, 60% of people needed to vote yes. So what does this mean? Johnson County Courthouse officials are planning to move forward after looking at their options. I spoke with Johnson County Attorney Janet Linus Monday morning about the possibilities of a loss yes. on Election Day. Um, clearly, um, we'll be disappointed if that's the outcome. Um, but we'll have to manage in some way. Um, I think that we'll have to be looking at things that are going to be maybe even more drastic that people aren't going to really like in terms of really delaying courts, hearings, et cetera, even longer. I feel sorry for the people who want to get divorced and have to wait for two years to be able to get a, a court space to be able to do that. Linus said on Monday that if the bond had not passed, many areas of concern would be affected. Right, I think that's going to be up to the Board of Supervisors exactly what will happen. Uh, clearly the needs are not going to go away if there's a no vote. We will be shipping inmates outside of Johnson County. We will be spending a lot of Johnson County taxpayer outside of Johnson County. And we'll continue to have the security and safety needs that we have in the courthouse. Um, right now, trials, as I've said, are being continued because we don't have adequate courtrooms. And unfortunately, that's going to mean for a lot of uh, participants in the legal justice system that they're going to have their cases delayed even longer. Um, so I think the Board of Supervisors and the Criminal Justice Coordinating Committee will get to work and try to figure out where we go and what our next step is. If the Justice Center had passed, it would have been built within three years and cost $48.1 million. Anna Theodosis, Daily Iowan TV. Thanks, Anna. Last night's election paved the way for many firsts in the nation. Colorado and Washington became the first states to legalize recreational marijuana. The federal law still considers the drug illegal, but its legalization in some states is still a landmark move. Los Angeles County voters approved a measure requiring porn performers to wear condoms during sex scene. The AIDS Healthcare Foundation sponsored the initiative. A statement from the adult entertainment industry say they promised to sue in order to overturn the measure. The first ever openly gay senator was elected into office. Tammy Baldwin beat out former Wisconsin Governor Tommy Thompson to become the first gay senator. She will, was also the first woman from Wisconsin elected to the Senate. At least 118 gay lesbian candidates won in local and state races. And now for your Hawkeye sports update, let's go to Kate Constable. Hello and welcome back to the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio. It's Wrestling Media Day, which can only mean one thing. We're heading to the mat room, where Coach Tom Brands and his historically successful wrestling program are hard and back at work.
Hello, Cody Goodwin here standing inside the mat room down in Carver Hawkeye Arena where the Hawkeyes are about to take on wrestling practice this afternoon. Head coach Tom Brands addressed the media earlier today about his team and the upcoming season. The Hawkeyes finished third last year at the NCAA tournaments behind both Penn State and Minnesota, two tough conference foes who are ranked ahead of them this year in the preseason poll. Tom, Tom Brands talked about his team and how it'll be crucial to score big points this year all season long. Uh, you know, you don't want eight or nine guys doing the job. You want 16 or 17 or 18 guys that are capable of doing the job and then fighting 10 guys that do the job. And last year, we left some points off the board when you're talking about you know, realizing the full fighting power. And the formula isn't complicated. It's very simple. You know, 10 weight classes, you want 10 weight classes for it. It sound like a broken record. It's irrelevant how tough the Big Ten is. Um, you know, you look at the national duels, for instance. You know, you put 16 teams in there. If they go to this format, um, the ninth place team is probably the top 16 in the country. So that shows you that there's depth there team-wise. Um, I don't know what that means to us. What, what, what it means to our guys, um, they should have certain ideas in their head of who their competition is. And when you talk about individuals, now it becomes more relevant. Some of those athletes, including Matt McDonough, three-time national finalist and two-time national champion for the Hawkeyes, also addressed the media today. Matt McDonough talked about complacency and how he actually is being pushed a little bit harder this year in the wrestling room, thanks to a couple of freshmen. It's, it's uh, a blessing in disguise. It's, you know, it's great. Um, obviously, when you get yourself used to um, having your way in the room, um, you know, that's how you want it. And then guys come in that aren't going to take a back seat, and you know it, it's a it's a wake up call that you know you're battling for every single thing you have, um, not only you know in competition but also in the wrestling room, and, and that's what really elevates you to yet another level. Um, and you know the hope is that it does the exact same for for the guys that I'm training with. And while wrestling may be just kicking off their season, another Hawkeye sports team's found their way to continue theirs. You saw him earlier, now he's back on the set with us, Cody Goodwin, field hockey beat reporter. And Cody, can you fill us in on the exciting field hockey news? While everybody was glued to their TVs last night for the presidential election, Iowa actually found out last night from the NCAA that they will make their second straight appearance in the NCAA field hockey tournament, one of just 16 teams to make the big dance. And they're playing host team Virginia. They're also in the same region as number two Princeton. What are their odds looking like? Their odds actually look very favorable. And if you ask the players themselves, I talked to them last night after they found out that they had made the field, they're very excited about this region. It's very, it's a very, their teams are very beatable, and they know that they need to come out and play. They can't look too far ahead. They know that well, too. But it is a very favorable region. They're on the opposite side of the bracket as, form, as all fellow Big Ten teams, Michigan and Penn State. So that also plays into their favor, and that's something that they're aware of. But it's a very beatable region. It's one that they're very excited about, and they have to come out ready to play. And now they made it to the NCAA tournament last year, and they have about six or so seniors on the team, so they're fairly experienced. What did they learn last year that they're now bringing to this year? They know that this is really it. This is all they've got left, especially for those six seniors, especially uh, senior goalie Kathleen McGraw and senior goalie, or not senior goalie, senior defense uh, player Jessica Barnett. This is it. This is their last shot at it, and they really just they want to go out with a bang. Okay, Cody. Well, thank you. That's all for us in sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kate. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Thursday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read some of the reactions about the presidential election outcome from local officials. And the next step for the Justice Center. Read about what was discussed during a meeting Wednesday night. That's all for your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.